<laughs> it's Mo. I am starting a, another reading vlog. I have like three reading vlogs going on the go, but I wanted to start one because it is Leanne from Leanne Reads Cat Lady Readathon, where you are supposed to read books with cats in them. There are several prompts. I'm not really prepared for this intro, so I will encourage you to go visit her channel and see her announcement for the readathon. The readathon is just a weekend, so it's just the I think it's just the 13th and the 14th, but I'm doing it from the 12th to whenever I feel like it, basically. This is a great readathon all about reading books with cats involved in cats. Cats on the covers, cats in the books, cats in the title, cat characters, cat side characters, cats, cats, cats. And we all know I love cats, so I definitely wanted to participate in this one. This is also going to be in conjunction with my project that I want to do on cat detectives, or detectives with cat characters, or cats in detective novels. I thought we would start with, maybe not the first, but definitely the most well-known cat detective duo, The Cat Who Books by Lillian Jackson Braun. When I was in my teens, early 20s, I read a million of these Cat Who books. There are actually 29 Cat Who books, and Lillian Jackson Braun wrote some other books, some short stories and things like that, that involve Quillian and his cat helper. But I haven't read these books in years and years and years, and honestly, I didn't remember basically anything except I remembered I liked them because they were cozy mysteries, and I liked them because there's a cat main character. I did save one of my original paperbacks from that time period, but I can't find it because my library is all torn apart and I'm not sure where it is. But I know for a fact it wasn't the first in the series that I had in physical form, so I decided to start with the first of the series on audio. The first in the series is The Cat Who Could Read Backwards, and in this book we are introduced to Jim Quillian, who is a reporter and newspaper man who you find out in the beginning is kind of down on his luck, has had some scandals has had some setbacks in his career and in his life, and he is going to a magazine newspaper in Chicago to kind of get a fresh start. It's not what he expected, though, because they put him on the art beat. There's already an art critic who has to know about art, but they want him to do, like, stories about artists and about the art scene and kind of be out and about in the art community. But Quillian doesn't know anything about art, so he's hesitant to take the job at first. The thing that really seals the deal for him taking the job is the art critic himself. He's a recluse, he's known for being extremely controversial, and kind of an <laughs> So Jim Quillian really wants to find out what the story with this art critic is, so he decides to take the job. And the story goes from there. I just started it yesterday on Friday the 12th, and I'm about 40% into the audiobook. These books are very short. They're only like 250 pages, if that, and this audiobook I think is only like six hours long, so they're quick and easy to get through. And not remembering anything about this book, I am like pleasantly surprised. One, I had no idea, but this book was written in 1966. So Lillian Jackson Braun started with this book, wrote it in 1966, and finished the series with the 29th book in 2007. So this is like a huge spanning series. There are lots of books to read. It's super fun. And I had no idea that it was written that long ago. It definitely does not read like a book that was written in the 60s necessarily. It's also obviously clearly not a contemporary book because there's no cell phones or internet or anything like that. I'm so surprised at how engaging and fast-paced and interesting this book is. Like, I'm already totally sucked in. I want to find out more about the cat. I want to find out more about the mystery. I want to find out more about Jim. I want to find out all the things. So I'm having such a good time. I do think that there are probably some outdated ideas and problematic phrases, words, or descriptions in this book. Um, there's been one so far that I was like, ooh, but it happened right in the beginning and it made me nervous. But since then, I really haven't had 
too many other problems with it. I do think that Jim Quillian fancies himself a ladies man and so there's definitely going to be that little bit outdated idea of the, you know, rugged handsome man who gets the girl kind of thing or like all women are somehow amazingly attracted to him even though they're like hot young things and he's like a middle-aged failed reporter. Other than that, I'm having such a good time. I'm really enjoying it and I'm excited to see where this story goes and I can tell already I'm going to be continuing on with this series and I'm going to be reading or rereading most of the Cat Who books at some point. I've been doing a lot of vlogs where I talk about books that I've read in the month, but I also do a vlog style reading wrap up at the end of the month. So you do hear my thoughts on the books close after I've finished them. I always try to add things into the reading vlogs that I won't necessarily say in the wrap up or in the wrap up I'll have a point that I thought of about that book that I didn't include in the vlog. Let me know if that is working for you or if you are finding these vlogs repetitive. Also let me know if I'm doing a reading vlog that's spanning multiple months, which I believe this one is going to be. Let me know if you want to see the books in the wrap-up or if you want me to keep them like a secret TBR. Let me know what you're reading for the cat lady or cat man or cat person readathon and I will catch up with you when I read some more of the cat who could read backwards. It is about a month later. Uh, my bookcases are getting sorted and I did finish The Cat Who Could Read Backwards. I was able to read it in the weekend for Cat Lady Readathon. I watched Leanne's vlog that she did for her readathon and it was really fun. I'm hoping that she'll do some more Cat Lady Readathons because I didn't really get the opportunity to explore the idea of Cat Readathon in August when she did this first one because I was doing so many other things. I finished The Cat Who Could Read Backwards. I really did enjoy it. I didn't remember the ending at all. I didn't remember the way that the mystery went. It's definitely a cozy mystery in that there's not a lot of blood or gore or really difficult themes and it is all solved fairly simply and quaintly but interestingly and definitely makes me excited to read the other Cat Who books. You can see more of my thoughts on the Cat Who Could Read Backwards in my August wrap-up which I will link in the description box below. As I was saying in the last clip, I don't know if I should keep these vlog books a secret. It's already been basically a month since I've started this vlog till now. If I were going to keep them out of my wrap-ups, I think I would mention them in my wrap-ups but say they're for an upcoming vlog. But it's hard not to talk about the books during my wrap-ups. Anyway, so I don't know what I'm going to read next, but I did receive two packages. I have a few cozy cat mysteries that I already had on my TBR shelf, but I also had a few on my want to read shelf. So I did go through and purchase those books recently. Not all of them, but some of them. And two books have come in the mail. I like to use Amazon. I don't want to support them. I want to eventually do away with my Amazon subscriptions and stop using them entirely. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. Let me know if you still use Amazon or if you have stopped completely. If you have strong feelings one way or the other, I would love to hear them. I, I don't like Amazon, partly because I can't get like recyclable mailers or I can't know what kind of plastic use I'm going to be getting for them. Pre-pandemic, they did have an option to for things to be not wrapped in plastic, but that they've totally done away with that. Some of these might be cat mysteries, some of them might not. This one is a cat cafe mystery, Cat About Town by Kate Conti. That is a lot of C's. Cat cafe mystery, Cat About Town, Kate Conti. On the case and on the prowl, it says. Very floppy mass market paperback. 
like it. I don't know what most of these cat mystery books are about. I just got them because they were cat mysteries. This is a not a cat cozy mystery. This is Murder at Hotel 1911, an Ivy Nichols mystery by Audrey Cohen from the Palm Beach Co. library system, which is fun. And this is just a cozy mystery that I had marked on my want to read list. My want to read list on Goodreads is always listed down below, but it's getting like wildly out of control. I think I have over a thousand books on there. So what I really like to do is periodically go through that list and then go to used bookstores or purchase from used bookstores online a couple of those books to kind of bring down uh, the amount of books on my want to read list and have them more on my physical TBR. One cat cozy mystery and one regular cozy mystery. I think next steps are going to be to gather all my cat cozy mysteries and really decide which cat mystery I want to read next. I'm back in the same place because my camera was still set up and I have collected some of the cat books. These were all the ones I could find. I think this is all the ones that I have, but I also got more book mail. I think these are cat cozy mysteries. So this one is Carol Nelson Douglas Catnip a Midnight Louie Mystery. This is one set I think in Las Vegas. Then this one one is oh this one is not a cat mystery this is monkey beach by eden robinson this is a canadian indigenous author i learned about this book from books and lala and this is on my 21 books i found out about in 2021 that i want to read in 2022 list so i think that's all the book mail i have coming um and i haven't made a purchase since i think february or march from any online booksellers, so that was good. All right, so we've got Catnip, which seems to be set in Las Vegas, Cat About Town, which is set in Massachusetts, Rest in Pieces. Now, I do have another Rita Mae Brown and Sneaky Pie Brown book, but it's later in the series. This is the second in the series. This is set in Virginia. This one, uh, When the Cat's Away by Kiki Friedman, I don't know actually has a cat in it, Oh no, a purloined feline from Madison Square Garden. So this is set in New York. I don't think the cat is like the main feature like these other books. I think that it is just part of the mystery, but that totally counts. And then lastly, Cat on the Edge by Shirley Russo Murphy. This is set in, doesn't say, but it is a cat who witnesses a murder. And then this series is all about cats so I don't know if it's the same cat or different cats or what happens so that's five I do have one more but I don't know where it is right now and that is the mystery on Hilltop Farm which is a Beatrix Potter mystery and I thought that that mystery was all about Beatrix Potter actually but it's really about all the animals that Beatrix Potter invented and wrote about in her children's series books and I know that there is a cat in that one too and I think he features fairly prominently. I'm not going to read that one because it is on my booktube spin list. Then to determine which cat mystery book I'm going to read next, a lot of these are like purple too. Uh, I don't know. They're all a fairly similar length. Rest in Pieces is longer. Some of them look better. Some of them look worse. This catnap is actually put out by Tor, so interesting. I think I will read the first line of each book and then decide by the first line which is my next cat mystery. It is a few days later and I have actually already picked my next cozy cat mystery read. I read the first line of all the books and we'll get into that in a second but I did get one more book in the mail from that order and since I've opened every other book that we've got in this vlog I thought we would open this one too. The last book that I got online was a mystery but it wasn't a cat cozy mystery. It's called The Case of the Hook Build Kites by J.S. Borthwick. This was on my want to read list so I picked this up. Here are my five cat cozy mysteries. If I had to rank them in what I think the best line is going to be, I think I would put it like this. Rest in Pieces by Rita Mae Brown, 
When the Cat's Away by Kiki Friedman, Cat on the Edge by Shirley Russo Murphy, Catnap, and then Cat About Town. But let me read you in reverse order, starting with this one, the first line of each book, and then I'll tell you what my actual ranking was, and then I will tell you what book I picked. What I thought would be the worst opening line, which is at the bottom, and this is just the first opening sentence, just the first sentence alone, and the first line is, the cat's eyes had been on me during the entire service. Interesting, what kind of service? Church service, funeral service, there's a cat, this person maybe doesn't like cats. Interesting. My next from the bottom was going to be Catnap by Karen Nelson Douglas. So it's a prologue, not chapter one, and the first line is, I have a nose for news and pause at nothing. I think I would rank this one the bottom right now. I have a nose for news and pause at nothing. Now if it was pause, like pause, Maybe I'd be like, well, where is this going? It's really silly. It's not an indication that it's a cat because it's not the word pause, P-A-W-S. So I have a nose for news and pause at nothing. I don't know. I don't love that line. I don't think it's very good. I'm putting that one at the bottom of my ranking out of these two. My next book is A Cat on the Edge by Shirley Russo Murphy. And the first line is the murder of Samuel Beckwaite in the alley behind Jolly's Delicatessen was observed by no human witness. A murder has taken place. Obviously, if there's no human witness and this is a cat cozy mystery, it was a cat witness. But wouldn't the murderer have been a human witness to the murder? I don't love it, but I like it more than these. So it's got me intrigued. It does have me intrigued. I want to know who saw the murder. Was it cats? I want to know who was murdered. But I don't think this makes sense. It makes more sense than catnap because that one doesn't make any sense. Well, I'll put this on the top. That's in the place that I thought it would be so far. The next book that I thought would have a good line was When the Cat's Away by Kinky Friedman. The first line in this is... Winnie Katz's lesbian dance class was like God. Winnie Katz's lesbian dance class was like God. We're introduced to a character. We're introduced to a lesbian dance class. Why is the dance class like God? What does that mean? Intriguing, certainly. I like the mention of queerness already. But I have no idea what it is. It doesn't connect to any larger idea that I have of this story. But I still like it the best so far. It's at the top. And then what I thought would be the best line, and I think that this is a bias because I know that Rita Mae Brown is a, a pretty renowned author, or at least has a renowned book, Ruby Foot Jungle. Here is the first line of Rest in Pieces. Golden light poured over the little town of Crozet, Virginia. So we have the setting, we know where we are, golden light, that means it's probably like in the late summer, early fall, but it gives me nothing besides setting. The cover is a little autumnal, but it's not the most interesting, so I'm going to put it in the middle. Actually, I think I'm going to do nose for news at the very bottom, light in Virginia, then a cat watching at the service, intriguing, the murder, already introducing a murder, and then the lesbian dance class. Because why? I want to know. What does it have to do with cats? What's going on? So this is the order that I would put it in. Now, I already tried to read this. I read a couple of chapters and it's just too noir, ridiculous, parody. Not in the mood. I thought, we'll go to the next one. No. So I ended up trying Catnap, which was on the bottom of my stack, and this is the book that I ended up reading. So we went in reverse order. I went with the worst line, 
And I was a little trepidatious at first because the first chapter is a chapter of the cats and it is from the cat's point of view. And the cat is actually reminiscent of this, a little bit noirish, a little bit outlandish, a little bit of a parody. I wasn't sure how that was going to go, but that chapter is only a couple of pages. And then we get to the first chapter with our human main character. And this book is all about Midnight Louie, who is a cat in Las Vegas. He is free to come and go as he wants, and he happens to be at a book convention and he stumbles upon a dead body. He doesn't want to be responsible for the dead body, he doesn't want to be seen as a suspect for the dead body, so he decides to not alert anyone until the next morning and when he does alert the authorities it happens to be a PR woman, Temple Barr, who is working at the book convention and Louis leads to this dead body. There's no question that Temple Barr was involved in this murder. There's no question that Louis was involved in this murder, but Louis feels responsible to help Temple figure out what happened to this murdered editor. That's the basic premise. Temple and Midnight Louis form a friendship and then ideally solve this crime. I am about halfway through this book now and I've been reading it for a couple of days and honestly it's taken me a lot longer than I thought it would. I'm really really enjoying the setting. I like the Las Vegas setting. I like the book setting. It's funny that I have read several books this year about authors, editors, PR people working with books, book agents. I had no idea that that's what this was about and it's funny that this just happens to fall in with those. So I'm really happy about that. I am liking the PR gossip about this editor and how he was like not very nice and how he didn't treat his authors well. Liking the relationship between Temple and Louis. Louis gets a chapter every now and again where you hear from his perspective and he's a very noir, womanizing, you know, stereotypical private eye type character, but a cat. But when it's Temple's chapters, he's just a cat. So he might be helping, but you're not getting, like, there's no talking cat. So it's kind of a mix between the cat who could read backwards and a more, like, silly cat-driven novel, which is interesting, but it was written in the 90s and it's definitely of its time. There's a lot of name dropping and pop culture references are just taking me out of it a little bit. I mean, I, I'm familiar with the 90s. I was alive in the 90s. I haven't read an older book that was at its time of publishing so current that it was able to like name drop and put all these references in to feel relevant and current. But now, of course, reading it 30 years later, it does not feel relevant or current at all. It just feels pretty hokey and ridiculous. Although I really like the setting of this book convention, there's kind of a side plot with some cat book imprint mascots gone missing. The pace is not like moving along enough. There's like not a lot happening and we're halfway through the book. Yes, maybe we've identified some suspects, but like in a very tenuous manner. Like, yes, we're kind of looking for these cat mascots, but like in a very like on the side manner. Yes, we're introduced to a potential love interest, but he only gets a couple of lines every, you know, quarter of the book. It's just not a fast-paced, exciting, cozy mystery. And I think for a cozy mystery, that's what you really need, is something that's just like fluffy, light, fast, fun. And this isn't exactly hitting that. But I will continue to read Catnap, and when I finish it, probably, I will get back to you. So 
So I have finished Catnap, the second Cat Cozy Mystery in the first installment of this Cat Cozy Mystery reading vlog series. I'm definitely going to be continuing reading Cat Cozy Mysteries throughout, I don't know, at forever, and I will continue to update them in specific reading vlogs for Cat Cozy Mysteries. What can I say about Catnap? I feel like this book, although it is not the first effort by this author, she was at this time pretty well renowned as a sci-fi fantasy mystery romance author. Apparently she wrote like 60 titles previous to this one. It still feels like a first novel. Definitely a first novel in the series. It still seems like she's trying to find the authorial voice also of Midnight Louie because in this book Midnight Louie is supposedly the author. These are supposedly his memoirs and he is you know, writing these books to give to the world, essentially. This was not compelling. It felt very, like, scattered. It felt very thin in a lot of ways. The um, suspects were very thin. The character development of Midnight Louie and End of Temple Bar, our other main character, was very thin. Like, you do find out things about all of these characters, but not anything that, like, really makes you want to keep reading. There's a little bit of an overall mystery as to why Temple Bar's romantic partner and she split up and how she ended up in Las Vegas so you do kind of want to know about that and then there's a connection that Temple Bar and Midnight Louie have and you want to see if that's going to continue as well which obviously it is. I could see this mystery novel actually having like different main characters besides Temple because Midnight Louie is such a cat about town and he does travel from place to place under his own volition that he could meet up with other people who are like amateur sleuths, which would be very cute. Overall, the mystery had some red herrings, certainly, but then they kind of weren't red herrings, but they kind of were. It did, I would say, give you all the elements of the crime that you needed to know to solve the crime, but not in a way that you could possibly ever solve the crime. You just had to pick someone and maybe that was the right person and maybe it wasn't. I don't love mysteries that it's impossible for the reader to find out and you just have to guess. I prefer mysteries that either don't give you all the clues and you just have to guess, or give you all the clues and it is possible for you to guess. I feel like this book gave you all the connections that you needed to make in the very very end at the like the very last quarter of the book and only by going all the way back to the very beginning and remembering something that was seemingly very inconsequential could you have known. Which sounds fine but like it was just not doable I don't think and I think it was kind of maybe made up along the way. But I do think there were some really interesting conversations in this book. This book supposedly takes place not too long after Roe has been in enactment for a while and it does talk a lot about abortion and the idea of why women would have abortions, how they had unsafe abortions before Roe, and how now, you know, that was becoming destigmatized. So it definitely was a weirdly timely read because, you know, of everything that's going on in our current day world, which which sucks, by the way. Those conversations were quite intense and serious and definitely more impactful than you come to expect in a cozy mystery, but I love cozy mysteries that have those elements to them. I think the Julie Smith series that I'm reading, the Skip Langdon series, kind of has some of that, and I've definitely read some other cozies that have kind of a bigger impact. So although I didn't love Douglas's writing in this, and although it felt very weak to me in certain places. I would definitely continue on with this series to see if she brings in relevant and topical topics like that. I didn't love hearing Midnight Louie's perspective and I thought that it, although she was obviously exploring feminist themes with the abortion and medical practice themes and how women are treated by medical practitioners, Louie was very misogynistic and sexist and there was just a lot of contrast there that I didn't love. It didn't feel fluid and, and not to say that a character in a feminist geared novel couldn't be misogynistic, but our main character, it just seems odd. I won't be like purchasing any more of these, I don't think. It wasn't a compelling enough novel to me to want to 
buy more of these unless I just happen to find them. Now, will I keep my eye out and use bookstores? Yes, but I'm not going to be using online means, which I don't 100% agree with in the first place. We do have quite a few more cat cozy mysteries to explore. Compared to the first, The Cat Who Could Read Backwards by Lillian Jackson Braun, I definitely think that was the far stronger novel and the more exciting and interesting cat cozy. The question of the video is, do you have any cat cozy mysteries that you can recommend to me? I would love to know if you've read any of the Cat Who books or any in the Midnight Louis series that you would particularly recommend, but I would also love to know if you have any other cat related mysteries in general so that I can add more to my TBR for this series. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye!